Welcome to another episode of Follow the Brand TV. I am your host, Grant McGall, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal brand and business development company. I want to take you on a journey through another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal stories, business conversations, and tips to improve your brand. By listening to the Follow the Brand TV series, you will differentiate yourself from the competition and build trust with prospective clients and employers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Make it one that will set you apart, build confidence, and reflect who you are. Building your five-star personal brand is a great way to improve your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or any of my guests, please email me at grant.mcgall at fivestarbdm.com. Now, let's begin with our next episode on the Follow the Brand TV. Welcome, everyone, to the Follow Brand Podcast. We're going to do this live on Follow Brand TV series. And I've been involved with the fraternities for a number of years, whether I was in my college time or through business. And I always come across different executives, different people. They always ask me that one question Are you Greek? And I'm like, oh, I know I look a little Roman, but you know, not Greek. I'm actually you know, from Omaha, Nebraska. And you're like, no, no, no. You know what I'm talking about. No, but I. <laughs> I, I did not officially uh, pledge because I had so much fun with all the different frats that I, I, I didn't want to um, alienate myself, but I learned a lot from them. And I tell you one thing, over the time, you cannot find a better networking group of individuals of purpose. They have purpose. They, they pride themselves on achievement. They want, they understand the struggle specifically for African Americans in uh, these United States of America and what it takes to move the ball forward. And, it, and it's a team effort. It's a team effort. You cannot do it individually. You will not get so far, but so far. So we're going to have a conversation tonight with a chapter that's out in Denver. I'm going to have them introduce themselves individually so we can get to look and feel what's going on in the Colorado Rockies. So we're going to start off with Mr. Dwayne Moore. He's running things out in Denver. Can you introduce <laughs> Oh, first of all, Grant, I want to thank you for, for having us today to talk about our health initiative that we're launching. So really do appreciate this. This is really awesome to be here. Um, but yes, my name is Dwayne Moore, and I am the Polmark or, or president of the Denver Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And our chapter was established on February 20th, 1954. And we have about 81 active members. And uh, some of the highlights that my chapter does that I'm, I'm truly proud of is um, one initiative is our scholarship foundation. Our, our foundation have given over 800 scholarships over the last 47 years. And we continuously do that every year. And that particular organization is ran by our, our frat brother, Daniel Brown. Um, also, uh, we're into um, senior housing um, uh, facilities. So we have a senior housing facility called Kappa Towers. It's about uh, 50 units. Um, it was established in the early 80s. And we had a second one built last year in 2021, uh, <clears throat> Kappa Tower 2, uh, which has about 70 units. And that particular organization is ran by our frat brother, Larry Williams. So very proud of those particular initiatives. And we also have a huge mentoring program, Capital League and Guide Right mentoring program within our particular chapter, which is a national um, uh, initiative. It's our flagship initiative from a fraternity perspective. And our, our particular program, it, it facilitates ages fifth through 12th grade, and uh, we train for leadership and we, we do a great job. So I'm very proud of what my chapter has accomplished. And, and, and again, thank you for having us. Oh, without question, we want to give good information to the audience. Some of them may be aware, some of them not aware, some might not know anything at all about the organization. So we're going to talk a little bit about that history. Now, yeah, one of your other officers here, Damon, you want to introduce yourself? 
Yes, sir, Mr. Grant, thank you. Uh, yeah, born and bred, just a little bit about me, born and bred here in Denver, Colorado. I am a native. Uh, I, I went to a school in Iowa, a small private school, and I found myself back here in Denver, Colorado due to family circumstances. And then I found myself working in the tech field, as Brother Moore has indicated in, in, in our conversation, I work in the tech field. But uh, I've been a part of this organization since 2001. I just crossed over 21 years. Uh, majority of my time has been serving uh, within Kappa as a mentor for the middle school, uh, director of the middle school program known as Guide Rights, and, and obviously facilitation with the uh, Kappa Leaguers. And I, I enjoy working and giving back to my community. Man, that, that is wonderful. And you're giving back right now. So we really appreciate all the efforts that you've given in 20 plus years as a member of the uh, Kappa fraternity. And then we have Dr. Foster Expose Jr. He is also a Kappa. I want him to introduce himself because he kind of brought this all together. And this is wonderful. You want to introduce yourself, Dr. Foster. Yes, and please just call me Foster. I'm I'm just as I'm just as low key as everyone else. Um, uh, Foster Expose Jr. I am a new member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. They call us Neos. I crossed March of this year, and I'm very honored to be here with my Paul Mark and our Keeper of Records uh, today. Uh, this program really has come about because it's our Paul Mark's vision and. What I do for a living is teach doctors how to be leaders. And Brother, Brother Moore embodies the essence of a leader. For him to say, I'm noticing something with, with my guys. I need to do something to help them. And so he brought it to me. He said, what do you think about doing something around health and wellness? So, so we started having a conversation. And I listened to his words and his vision and put it into um, like a strategy and brought it back to him. And here we are today with our first initiative around health and wellness. So honored to be here and to support my senior leaders. This is wonderful. You guys are all wonderful. I now I wanna go back in time just a little bit. Okay. The beginning of the organization, the fraternity. I know, I think it was sometime and you know, a lot of these, they started in the 1900s. You know, you see a lot about Howard University that, uh, you know, started a lot of these different uh, fraternities. And then I think there was someone that went out there to Indiana in the Midwest in Indiana and then got things kind of cooking out there. Who wants to talk about that history? Who, who wants to raise their hand? It's like, I got this. I know this history cold. <laughs> well, well I, I can start it off. So um, uh, Kappa Alpha Psi, which originally was Kappa Alpha Nu, was established on January 5th, 1911 on the campus of Indiana University at Bloomington. Uh, we had 10 founders going to an all-white school. So you have to understand in 1911 how difficult that was. Uh, we were having a conversation uh, about the things they had to go through, uh, one of which is they weren't allowed to go in classrooms. So they had to climb trees outside of their classroom just to monitor what was going on. So these brothers wanted to create um, this organization to make sure they were pushing each other um, um, forward and, and honor their achievements. So um, they started off at Kappa Alpha Nu. Um, soon there later, um, because they were in this very racist um, environment, they had to change their name to Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, that new was a trigger uh, for the uh, other folks in that particular school. So we had to change the name. But um, since then, uh, we've been um, um, doing a lot of community service. I'm training for leadership. Our motto is, um, um, uh, is um, oh, sorry. Um, achievement. Okay. Achievement in every field of human endeavor, sorry. Um, so, you know, we, we definitely embody that. And over the years, um, in 1921, you created what Brother um, Pryor was talking about, our, our, our Guy Right program, which is our national flagship program, mentoring program. And initially it was established to train young men to be campus. Um, train them and, and guide them in the right direction. And over the course of the decades, it became a community initiative where we were able to go out in the community and take those lessons learned and apply it to the young men in the community. And then 1975, Kappa League, which is the high school component of that, uh, was established. So uh, we do a lot of good work and it's based off of those 10 brothers, their vision and their ideas, and uh, we're elated to do it. Well, I tell you, I, I'm intrigued uh, by your mission uh, around achievement. Now I want to ask because, Damon, you say you've been a member for 20 plus years. What, what drew you to the organization? 
Well, Grant, <clears throat> I, I have a, a unique story, and I think probably uh, a good majority of the brothers that I have been, been involved in the organization probably share this same story. But I grew up, as I mentioned before, in Denver, Colorado. And I lived on a block full of Kappas, okay? And not to go too in depth about my story, but given that I came from a single family household, there was no father figure there. So I was blessed enough to have these role models take me in. I was a part of Kappa League, I was a part of God, right? Believe it or not. I was even a scholarship awardee back in 1995 when I graduated from high school. And they allowed me to be a part of these programs and to see how they moved and how they uh, maneuvered themselves within the community, all, all while still being entrepreneurs on their own. So when I seen that, I had no other choice. I, I was happy that I had role models that were able to take me under the wing and be father figures to me. So I basically am giving back because that's what my charge was as they left on and God, you know, rest their, rest their souls. They charged me, hey, hey, you have a duty and a responsibility to give back. Although yeah. I'm not a father myself, uh, I do still have a sense of duty to make sure that I give back to these young men. And as my own life's mission statement is to leave this place better than how I was left it or how I, how it was given to me. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful. I, I love that. That, that. That's great. You know, then we talk about a legacy and mm -hmm. handing it down and seeing the need. They saw the need, someone saw you, tapped you, you saw what they were doing, you want to be a part of that, instead of be a part of a, a game culture. You know, you got part of an executive leadership culture, right? I think that's wonderful, and it definitely brings you up. But that, that makes me pivot over to Foster. Now, I know Foster knows a lot about leadership. That's what he does as a mm -hmm. profession. He knows a lot about achievement. A lot of people come to him like, Foster, how, how do I achieve that next level? How do I get to this next level? So I'm going to ask you, Foster, how did you get to this next level of becoming a chaplain? That's a great question. It was actually a 32-year goal and dream of mine. I was first introduced to Kappa in, in, uh, when I was 17 years old in Beaumont, Texas. One of my church members became a Kappa, and I was just uh, fascinated by he would wear the, uh, the, the letters and stuff to church. Then I started going to some of their events and how they were so professional. My dad said, well, if you want to pledge Kappa, you should look into it. Unfortunately, at that time, things didn't work out at that campus. But once I got to Denver, reached out to these brothers and they connected with me and brought me in and started building a relationship with me. So that showed me right there, there was leadership there. And I went through the process and these, these brothers made me one of the capital men I am today. That is wonderful. And I'm gonna ask you, all of you, somebody's gonna step to me, step to me and answer this question because the one thing I remember about the Kappas, when I used to go to some of their uh, soirees or some of their parties that they would have is that they would step. I mean, <laughs> these guys know how to bring energy to a room. How, where did that history come from? Well, I, I, I'll give my best shot at this here. So you're referring to stepping or uh, strolling, would that be correct, Mr. Green? Yeah. Oh yeah, give it to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the history, a little bit about where this all came from, is that this is from an African tradition, believe it or not, and mm -hmm. we wanted to give back and or keep that sentiment of African American culture within our organizations. Now, mind you, there are other Greek letter organizations as well that share the same sentiment of of their brand of where they came from and how they got established. So, Kappas, you know, we just do things a little bit sweeter, neater, mm -hmm. and, uh, we, 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 we represent how we do it. That's, that'd be the best way to put it. <clears throat> we are the people, E, the T, T, Y, the Pretty Boys Incorporated, K, A, hey, Si, now what we do, this, now what we do, that, now what we do. This Pretty Boy swag is reserved for the men of Kappa Alpha Psi. The crimson and cream bold reminders that noobs don't blend in, they stand out. Uh, Kappa Alpha Psi, it's Kappa Alpha Psi to the day I die. It's, it's, the only, it's the only way, when you're in it, you'll know it's the only way. 109 years ago, 10 black men at Indiana University knew they needed a brotherhood. What they wanted to, to achieve being founded in the Jim Crow era, we're here today. We are a strong presence today.
1911, you could actually see it's the original one that we have produced. The fraternity's constitution, a reminder of why Kappa Alpha Psi started right on IU's campus. In 1911, it was rare for African Americans to go to college, not because they didn't want to, but because they often weren't allowed. It's why many historically black colleges and universities were founded. In Bloomington, Kappa's founders were the only black students then, and they were reminded of that, their transcripts marked with color on top, and IU student clubs wouldn't accept them, so they founded a black fraternity. At some instances, they weren't allowed to go to class, but they were still able to achieve. They were able to get their degrees. They were able to found a, uh, a black fraternity in a predominantly white institution and uh, follow their dreams. I became a member in 1988. Kappa's executive director, John F. Burrell, is in charge of expanding that dream to more than 700 chapters worldwide. Achievement in every field of human endeavor, our strongest motto. The advantages that we have, we live off their shoulders. We, we, the things that we have today is due to the hard work and dedication that they struggled through back then. But more than a century later, these Indiana Kappas still have a lot in common with their founders. It's being at a predominantly white institution, a uh, Research One facility in a predominantly white state, I still feel that, uh, feel the pressures they felt at some times, not being able to excel as a man of color um, on campus and in Bloomington. Hundreds of black men across the nation get that, especially these Kappas. Brother, Brother, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I can make it in the Kappa Alpha Sock. Cortland Crenshaw follows in the footsteps of his stepdad and grandpa. And like the founders, the noobs of the fraternity's first chapter moved to their own beat. Oh, yeah. Stepping, the Kappa shimmy, twirling the cane, all packed with black history. But back in the day, the cane was part of the dress code. And you can remember when you wore a tuxedo, it was a high top tuxedo, high hat, and a cane. That was the grace and elegance of the members as they presented themselves in society to show that we are dignified and first class uh, members of the, of the community. Today, Kappa still strive to display that and more. A nationwide literacy program, a leadership academy, and youth college preparatory program all paved the way for the next generation. After all, that is the Kappa way, achievement in every field of human endeavor. very smooth in how we do things, very meticulous. We're, we're not hopping around. We're often uh, imitated, never duplicated. So, you know, we, 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 love, we love what we do and, and we, we make sure we show up when necessary. Well, I tell you, my, my cousin, my younger cousin went to Kansas, uh, Jayhawks. Oh, mm -hmm. no, man, I think it was, it was either Kansas or Kansas State, but he became a Kappa. And I would go to a lot of his different uh, events because I specifically wanted to see the Kappas because I think it's just awesome. They bring that kind of energy. And again, I love the culture. It's about the culture. You guys are known for exquisite networking. You talk a little bit about that game and somebody would reach out to you. I love that. You know, each one reach one. Each one reach one. So whether you're in the corporate world, whether you're in the business world, whether you're still getting your education, you guys are bringing that sense of community to everyone that's associated with the Kappas that are touching you as an organization. And I want to talk a little bit about like this last event, because if you think about it, back in like the early 1900s, you know, you, you had World War I, you had the uh, Spanish flu epidemic. And then here we are, 100 plus years later, we're dealing with the COVID pandemic. You know, so I want to ask one of you, whoever wants to jump in, you know, what was it like to lead your chapter during the COVID pandemic? Wow. So uh, when the stay at home direction came down, um, we, from a national perspective, got the direction that we could no longer be in person. All of our events, all of our meetings were in person. So when we got that direction, we had to figure out how to conduct business in this new virtual world. So we adopted the virtual platform fairly quickly. Um, and then we moved all of our 
business type meetings and, and activities to this virtual environment. And, and what that allowed us to do is one, conduct the business that we do well and making sure that we were still achieving and, and still um, um, doing the things that we're known to do, but it also allowed us to keep an eye on, on active members. You know, we were locked up in our houses for two years. Um, so it allowed us to look at brothers and ask, hey, how are you doing? You know, and then, you know, provide a safe space for them to have that conversation. So it was twofold on, but that virtual environment was key. Um, you, you know, again, Brother Pryor and I being in technology, we're, we're all about uh, transformation. Uh, technology transformation. So uh, when it happened, um, our poll mark at the time, Javar Hitch said, how do we maintain and move business? And Brother Pryor and I said, let's use this platform, let's move everything over and let's teach our seniors how to use it for that platform so we all can move forward in sync in one direction and we can make sure that everybody's doing okay. So we, we were able to still provide all the scholarships that we do on a, re on a, on a yearly basis. Uh, Capitara One was finished on January 2021 in the midst of the pandemic, um, as well as our, our, our mentoring program, we were still able to conduct our program virtually for two years. These kids were online, uh, very positive and very active, but it was from a virtual perspective. So uh, that virtual platform, Zoom in particular, was very pivotal in, in how we were able to conduct business. Uh, and we did, a, we did a good job. So you're still here. And uh, that's a good absolutely. I want to ask Damon, because um, I'm not sure about this. This is because you brought something up about scholarship. So how is the chapter funded? Okay, that's a very good question. So back when we when the Guide Right and the Capital League Programs Initiative was started, we wanted to make sure, at least here in Denver Alumni, that we had a, a fund that allowed them to, to, to continue to be able to give scholarships on a yearly basis as we have been. So basically the, the scholarship foundation was established and birthed at that point in time. So each so since then, every year we have an initiative to make sure we raise a certain amount of funds that goes into our scholarship fund so that it continues to allow us to do the things that we would like to do within the community with our different mentoring programs. So basically we, we go out, we community uh, we outreach, we make sure that our, our sponsors that are also a part of our community like uh, Excel Energy, different things like that, that also feeding into our community, we also give them an opportunity to assist as well. And that's where we have our scholarship uh, foundation. No, that's, and that, that's good because you've got people that have been a part of the organization, they've moved into possibly corporate America, or again, they, they're uh, entrepreneurs and they, they give back. And that is how you're able to then give back to the, even the generation that's coming up in the form yep. of scholarship. So Foster, tell me a little bit more about this program. I don't know if that's part of something that you're fundraising for, that's a community event. Give me a little bit more information about that. Sure, great. Uh, so this health and wellness initiative is designed to provide men a space to hear from other men that are professionals to talk about health and wellness, uh, mental health, and also how to just kind of get things back together for yourself. So on September 24th, we're bringing two panelists to the conversation. Dr. Brad Bellard, who is a sports medicine physician in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He used to be a team uh, physician for the Dallas Mavericks. He's also uh, the author of the book called Elite, which is a great book that allows high achieving men to kind of dig into some of their, their challenges. Now, he has a, a pretty diverse background, being a physician, but also having a coaching practice. So he brings that spirituality as well. So his conversation next month will be around that health and wellness and that, that coaching piece. And then Nasir Bayan, who is in Atlanta, Georgia, who is a licensed professional counselor, he works with men of color around mental health issues. So those two will bring the conversation around, uh, again, the health and wellness piece, the mental health, the coaching, because we all know we're still experiencing the throes of this clinical tsunami and it's impacted all of us differently. And this space has allowed the guys the chance to hear from professionals, but also pick up some tips and tools how to better their lives moving forward.
What's on your mind? Cause you've been acting different lately, girl. What's on your mind? I'm tired of arguing. I need to know what's on your mind. What's on your mind? Before. Let's be real, I just want you and I need you more You think I'm lying every time that I speak And you still bitching about some shit from last week Why you wanna go through my phone? Why you wanna go through my phone? Sorry if I let you on Sorry if I let you on I know you tired of sorry Speak up on and call me I hate it when you ignore me Baby, let me finish my story Pipe. Why do we fuss every night? Girl, it's alright. I just want you in my life. What's happening? I'll be your night. I can't save you all time. All time. All time. But you've been tripping all night. What's on your mind? Cause you've been acting different lately, girl. What's on your mind? Hey. I'm tired of arguing. I need to know what's on your mind. I say right foot creep, oh, I'm walking with that heater. Look around, stay low, make sure they don't see you. Catch some bad, walk down, face them with that heater. The devil under your feet, you're on your way to see him. Stretch me when I can't sleep, bang on when I see you. Play with me, you can't sleep, we got into the seat, shoe. You won't have no case, we range your shit soon as they face you. You won't have no space, we in your sex until we spray you. Sweet life. Man, we ain't even dang it. No cap. Nah, nah, nah. Crazy part is, I'm just getting started, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Put your man song. They coming out. Soon as they close that door, we just gonna walk down. They said we did wrong. Cause we knocked him out. But he who got caught lacking, tell that bitch that that's his fault If we draw the own guns, get that off And all them clones, including his spouse Kept that blick inside my drawers Every time I walk the dog I work for Tim and Soul CDs You throw a diss and you get tossed Say you ain't catch that cross, my name up, ain't no talk If they had a bang out at the stove from my pop a window I can see his spouse But I ain't seen that since Jordan Dixon made some leaks, I'm tall Big foul, they got that shit on me and I'm stolo Nigga knowing that it's retired I spit that shit that caused a massacre at the party I said right foot creep, ooh, I'm walking with that Look around, stay low, make sure they don't see you Catch some bad, walk down, face them with that heater The devil under your feet, you're on your way to see him Stretch me when I can't sleep, bang on when I see you Play with me, you can't sleep, we got into the sea shoe You won't have no case, we range your shit soon as they face you You won't have no space, we ain't your sex until we spray When I jump out the bag, I'ma hit it I'ma aim with the strap at his feet Throwing out the murder bags in the city Play on play while I'm standing on Billy Let the Drake take the top out the hit me Really quick that when we go on the Mission. Take his face, I ain't showing no pity. Close case, tell him all good riddance. Zombie land with a dog's percentage. Sprint a van and we all be in it. Catch him first, get a raw percentage. If you want, I put a coffin in it. I could get you one from inside my own. I just wanna take the bitch out for a ten. Tell them niggas I say fuck them all. And I'ma kill all you bitches. I say right foot creep, ooh, I'm walking with that heater. Look around, stay low, make sure they don't see it. Catch him bad, walk down, face him with that heater. The devil under your feet, you're on your way to see him. Stretch me when I can't sleep. Bang on when I see you Play with me, you can't sleep We got into the sea shoe You won't have no case, we range your shakes soon as they face you You won't have no space, we in your sex until we spray you now, That is obviously a valuable program mental health and bringing it to the visible form. I think it, uh, it, it rests at that invisible. A lot of people aren't talking about it. And I think our community really needs to have this conversation. We just talked about, we've been locked in our, our homes for two years, just interacting uh, 
um, through uh, virtually if, if you did that. Some people did not even do that. So having that kind of program, so we hear you, we, we know what's going on. So I know I was gonna ask you, Duane, what were the reoccurring th themes? Okay. I mean, were you getting people reaching out to you directly around mental health wellness? Or is that what was happening? And that's what prompted you to, to launch this program? Well, as men, you know, we don't do a good job in, in prioritizing our health, uh, physical or mental. You know, our, our generation, uh, we were always told to shake it off and, and, and keep going. Um, nothing's wrong with you. Shake it off. You'll, you'll be fine. Um, but the older we get, that that is not now no longer the case. So when the pandemic happened, um, another tool that we were using was GroupMe, uh, and it's a group chat to make sure that we can all text each other and have conversations throughout the day. So we're all working from home, but we're doing a massive amount of texting throughout the day just to make sure everybody's okay. And um, people were dying. Hundreds of thousands of people were dying. And the common theme was pre-existing conditions. But a lot of us didn't understand what that meant and if we fell in that particular category. So we started having those conversations. Um, and there we go back, creating that safe space for brothers to talk and have a good time. We were locked up. So brothers were a little more open in conversation. So when we started talking about pre-existing condition, uh, questions came about like, okay, well, when's the last time you've been to the doctor? How do you know you have these conditions? When were you diagnosed? And some of us, and I'm full transparency myself at that time, it was 10 years since I've been to a doctor. And my common response to aches and pain was, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Oh my God. Um, so what happened is we have a frat brother, Dr. Alfred Dash, patient first uh, medical here in Aurora. Um, he's, a, he's a doctor. So we challenge each other to make a doctor's appointment and get a, a blood test and a physical just to see what was going on. And because I was one of the ones to put it out there, I led that effort and I made my appointment. And uh, let me tell you, I, I was scared. So it was 10 years. I haven't had a blood test. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, when I went in there to get my blood test read, I was sitting in the lobby and he came out and I was sitting there with my head down and he, and he came, he said, uh, Brother Vice Polmark, are, are you doing okay? And I said, I'm nervous. And he said, you're fine. But what he did was he walked me through each component in my blood test to show me what it is, what it does and how it affects my body. Um, I say that to say, when I did go, they did find something with me, full transparency. Um, I had an issue with a buildup of calcium in my, in my bones. I had a hyperthyroid. So you have your thyroid in the front and you have four parathyroids in the back. The parathyroids regulates the amount of calcium in your bones and allows your calcium to flush out. My calcium wasn't flushing out and the long-term effects of not getting that treated is osteoporosis. So one thing I do remember is I was getting cramps in my hand a lot. And I, again, I attributed it to getting older, 40, about to be 46. So in my mind, it's getting old. Um, but if I had not went to the doctor and found that out, I would not have had the necessary procedures to get that taken care of. And now I'm fine. So as soon as I got my blood test, I went back to the group meet. I provided my documentation. I was very transparent. I said, hey, brothers, I went to Dr. Nash. Here's what he said. And that triggered other brothers to go. And I want to say, Brother Pryor, um, you correct me if I'm wrong, there was a list of brothers who went and most of them found something that was going on that either needed to be treated or needed to be addressed. So we set the precedence to one, make sure that we committed to make that first appointment, but secondly, to make sure that we're consistently going on a yearly basis um, and, and make sure that our bodies and our mind are doing well. And the big part was finding somebody to trust because as men, we don't like to talk about our ailments and what's happening and uh, what's going on and us getting older and our health declining. We don't like to have those conversations. So it took brothers pushing each other to say, hey, all right, that cough is a little loud. You might want to get checked out. Or, hey, you fell off that bike. Your leg hasn't been healing when the last time you got that taken out. And, and that allowed us to, one, open up to each other. Um, and two, you know, make sure that we are consistently checking on each other and make sure that we're healthy and, and well. And anytime somebody says anything small, like, hey, for instance, I'm logging off of social media for a while, that brother will immediately get a phone call. Is everything okay? Yeah. What's happening? How can we support you? I'm your keeper. Let's talk through this. Do I need to bring you somewhere 
to get you checked out. And we committed to doing that. So um, that's one of the main reasons what, what brought this up. And um, my vision was out there, but I didn't know how to put it together. And thanks to um, Brother um, Expose, uh, he came in and he, he helped me kind of package and, and put this together. And here we are today. Yeah. And, and Mr. Grant, let me let me add to this. All right, Ed. let let me let me help things out here. Brother Morris definitely gave a, a high level, very good uh, depiction of where we are right now. But I think it, it wouldn't be justice with without giving the whole full story of how we really got to this point. Um, Brother Moore, and correct me if I'm wrong here. The pandemic hit in 2019, right? And mm -hmm. there was a core twenty twenty excuse me, yeah twenty. Okay, there was a core group of us that all did works out we you know we rode bikes together we were lifting we were when that avenue was taken away from us or that tool that element was taken away from us we really had to really sit with ourselves and really start thinking about okay well, i can't do and have these these accesses i can't be distracted by okay i gotta go work out or i gotta go over here i got a meeting it was an opportunity for us to really sit down and do self-evaluation. And what came out of this one day was when Brother Moore, and it was just him and I, believe it or not, we were riding over the Aurora Reservoir on bikes. And I'm like, brother, we, we really have something we got to work with here because brothers have always given back to our community. We've yeah. always invested in our community. But what we yeah. never really did was invest in ourselves. Mm. We really never gave back. We never took time to say, well, you know what, man? Uh, doctor's appointments, uh, your financials, how is your, 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 your relationship going with your wife and your kids? Different things like that. It really exposed that. And there are many bike rides that him and I have where we had to have this conversation. And I'm like, brother, it isn't just us because we lost a lot of brothers in the pandemic. Believe it or not, we lost a lot. I think our chapter was hit one of the hardest in our region but we wanted to give back while, while we didn't have the tools and we didn't have the resources and we didn't know how to do this. I mean, thank God for Brother Expose coming in and, and picking up the, the flag and leading this charge. But there was a problem because we started seeing a decline of brothers' health. We started mm -hmm. seeing brothers not participating the way they used to. We started seeing brothers, you know, just not in their element that we would normally see them in. And we noticed, noticed that there was a decline of brothers in their in their in their in their mentals, things just weren't right. I mean, mind you, you take somebody that has been used to being able to roam free, and now all of a sudden you're being told, well, you only can go, you know, to the grocery store and back, or you only can find to the four walls. And if, and if you're a senior brother, you really wasn't going out because you didn't want to be impacted by this coronavirus, right? So when you take that element away, and you have to sit and think by yourself. There's nobody like myself. I'm single. I didn't have necessarily that outreach of saying, okay, let me talk to a wife or let me go outside and play, you know, catch with the kids or anything like that. I couldn't go anywhere. So when you start thinking and you're like, okay, I feel like a caged animal. I got to get out. I, I can't, I can't, I want to go do something, but I can't, I don't have these tools. I don't know what to do. You really have to start doing self-evaluation. I think that's where, where a lot of this got birth is that we all felt like that. If it wasn't for the phone calls from brother Moore and brother Clark and some of the other brothers that aren't, were not able to be on this call, it would have been a really hard time for even for some Very of the brothers to get through this because it was a, it was a wake up call. A lot of us like, look here, man, you got to work on some things that maybe you never ever taken time to. And, and to add to that, yeah, a lot of us had pandemic babies. Oh yeah, y'all forty. Were on. Oh yeah, we were we're all in our forties. Uh, I think only one brother's in his late thirties, but we're all in our forties. So we're all having babies, and one weren't planned. But we were like, okay, at 45, my daughter was born. When she's 20, I'm 65. I want to be around yeah. when she's 20 years old. So how do I ensure that I'm, I'm staying on my health and making sure that I'm doing the things necessary to be there during her graduation, to be there when she goes to college, to be there just in general? Uh, so, you know, we, we definitely had to take a look and, and make sure that we were pushing each other forward. So. Thou art 
must go. Still we will honor, love, and sing thy praises o'er and o'er. We'll live for thee, we'll strive for thee, we'll all thy ways adore. We'll long for thee and toil until we reach that golden shore. We'll long for thee and toil until we reach that golden shore. Well, I tell you, this is, I, I'm glad we're getting to this level that we're talking about the why why this is so, so important. And I think there's one other elephant in the room. Uh, and that is, you know, you talked about some of the, obviously the physical uh, level was tested during COVID, but there was another pandemic that was going on and that was the uh, racial unrest. Mm -hmm. And being in your home, me and uh, Foster talked about this on a previous episode, by yourself, watching, the different things that were occurring as a black person, as African American, and you looked in, in Dwayne talked about some of the history of how the capitals got started in the in the midst of um, you know racial uh, uncertainty. You, know, you had to do a lot of different things outside of the box just to get an education. Here we are in 2022, and we're still struggling. That weighs on your mind. There's no question. I want to ask Foster as a registered, uh, you know, and I always get this confused. I always say psychologist, psychiatrist. I, I know it's a psychologist, but I want to ask and just weigh in first from the frame of health and wellness, that component that we just went through during these two years of COVID and also these two years of uh, racial unrest. Give us some insight on that. That's a great question. You know, one of the things that I think a lot of us were not aware of as this, as I mentioned earlier, as this clinical tsunami still continues to swarm and kind of subside a little, what's coming now, what we're in the midst of is a psychological pandemic. All those things have felt and experienced that have come out, they're here right now. And the problem is for us as black men, some of us don't have the tools on how to deal with that. Your feelings, they need to be seen and felt, not suppressed. And I will argue that, you know, there's always this, this, this stigma that black men are angry. No, we're not angry, we're disappointed because we haven't been able to be human beings. We haven't been able to say it's okay to have that feeling, that emotion, that whatever it is that you're experiencing, let it out and have that conversation. This initiative is that first step moving the needle so that we can provide psychological safety for brothers to have conversations with, with their peers and also on that, that dialogue next month. So we have to be aware that, okay, yes, we have our shots. We're starting to get out more, but I may look the same, but something's going on in here. Yeah. And if you don't provide me with the safety to tell you, hey, this is what's going on, I'm going back to pre-pandemic. And to give you an example, I was up in um, Loveland uh, a few months ago and I saw a surgeon, just asked him, how's he doing? Broke down and cried. This big six foot five surgeon is on me just crying because no one had, had asked him how he was doing and with sincerity. So that's why these conversations are so important. And again, I keep going back to the fact that we are in the throes of a psychological pandemic, but we need to know that we're there and we gotta have more of these conversations and have more psychological safety so that we as men, because we're different, be able to have those conversations and express what's going on with us. Absolutely. 100% agree with everything you said. I'm so glad that you're having this event I encourage everybody to participate. So I, the big question is, how do they register to, to attend? Oh, great. So we have a flyer that's going to come out within the next few weeks once we get some approvals in place. You can also register via our Instagram, our Denver Alumni Chapter on Facebook. We're going to do a mass uh, uh, email and um, showcase to the actual Denver, not Denver, but all of the Kappa chapters across the country. 
And then also our own personal networks as well. There's going to be a link to invite, invite Bright so you can actually log on to that and sign up for the event as well. It is free and open to the public, of course, to men. <laughs> okay, I, I love that. I will, one other question is that I know there's a lot of interested parties and they want to learn more about the chapter uh, itself. Uh, what, what is the best way for, is there a website? How do they get more information about what's going on with campus in Denver? So, so we do have a website. Um, they can log on to www.denverkappas.org. Uh, there is a contact us section on the website where if they contact us or we'll get that information or they can call in. Uh, we also get um, inquiries on our Facebook page. So um, any of those two mediums, um, they can definitely get uh, one of us and we'll definitely respond and answer any questions uh, necessary. Excellent. Now this is a worldwide program. And I know you have a national uh, presence. I think you actually have a, some uh, other uh, chapters in other countries as well, yep. which is wonderful. And I believe the memberships are around 100, over 100,000 uh, members. Yep, well over 100,000, yep. So if there's other, you know, there's gonna be people in other parts of the country, wh where, where do they get to the national website? Uh, Brother Pryor. Uh, it's it's going to be the same. Just type in National Kappa Alpha Psi, and then you'll be directed towards our headquarters in Philadelphia. Yep, mm -hmm. you'll see it. Oh. National Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. So, or you can do it directly. Um, www.kappaalphapsi1911.com. I got a question. I got to ask this question. So if you let's just say you're an alpha, you know, or in uh, omega, um, you know, can you join and be a kappa? No, you made your decision. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Many, many, many you made your decision. Many, yeah, your decision's already been made. So unfortunately, you are. Yeah. Next lifetime, make better decisions. Yeah. Well, I know you guys have some networking between all the different fraternities and they all do talk to one another. We love to have fun. You got to have some fun in all of this. This has been wonderful. I believe, that, unless there is there anything that I have not said that you would like to say to our audience while we have a little bit of time? I don't necessarily have anything personally to say to our audience, but I definitely want to say thank you, Mr. Grant, for this opportunity. I think this is something long overdue within our black community. Uh, we do understand that we've been through a lot I'm not, and I'm not excluding other cultures that have had their, their, their um, struggles and different things like that, their adversities. But I wanna say thank you for allowing us this opportunity and your platform to be able to come and showcase what we're trying to do because not only is this a, a Denver alumni initiative. This is also a national initiative as well as our national grand chapter is trying, it has recognized that there is a, a health, you know, a mental health issue and concern within brothers across this globe. All right. So anywhere where there's a cap, there's brothers that have, have, have had struggles. So I just want to say thank you for taking the time to allow uh, Brother Moore and Brother Expose to come on here and kind of give a, a, a seed planting of what we're trying to do. We definitely do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. Go ahead, Dwayne. Oh, and then um, outside of the, the event, um, so we were talking about our foundation and us raising money. So if you're ever, um, any of your, your viewers are in the Denver area on September 20th, our foundation is having an annual golf tournament called the inaugural Del Berry Memorial Golf Tournament. Um, and it's named after one of our 
um, 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 great frat brothers who passed away last January. Um, so there's opportunities there. So um, we'll give you the link so people can register. But if you're in Denver and you play golf, we would love to have you. Um, all your all the proceeds will go to our scholarship initiatives, and then we'll be able to increase the amount of money we give on a yearly basis. Love to hear that. That that is wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, and Mr. Exposé. Any party words? Yes, just look out for that flyer and look at us on Instagram, on our Denver Alumni Facebook page, and you can register via the Eventbrite link to register for the event. It is free and open to men across the country. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. And I want to tell the audience that they can tune in to all the episodes on Follow the Brand TV series on my YouTube. And actually, so it's Five Star BDM, and that is B for Brand, D for Development, and for Masters.com. Thank you very much and have a great, great evening. Goodbye. Awesome. Follow the Brand TV broadcast host, Grant McGaw, as he visits with top executives and entrepreneurs to find out their secrets of success with their personal brand. Follow the Brand TV broadcast host as he focuses on brand development to build better relationships, bring value to your business, relationships, and career. You will enjoy listening to each episode that is tailored to speak to you directly. If you're looking for this type of clarity in terms of building your brand, you have tuned into the right station. Each episode will help you to shape a conversation in the five-star BDM network of 20,000 professionals and become a springboard for your corporate engagement and business opportunities. Each guest will frame their story in the areas of personal branding, business development, career development, financial empowerment, and technology innovation. Grant McGaw explains why he is the CEO and owner of his own professional career. Grant is an accomplished business leader and entrepreneur who wants to give back to individuals to grow their personal brand strategy. Tune in as he weaves his story about new possibilities while to you exceed expectations. If you love storytelling, this show will make for fun. Five Star BDM Brand Development Masters is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for the small to mid-sized business and entrepreneurs. Although every business is unique, they often share business development challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. Services include process improvement and operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our business and personal branding company has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. This results in more business, more opportunities, better reach, positive outcomes. Visit www.5starbdm.com today to learn more. Hey everyone, it's Grant McGall, CEO of 5 Star BDM and host of the award-winning Follow the Brand podcast and TV series, where I help you to build a five-star brand that people will follow. My genius is personal brand development through intelligent communication and helping you achieve your business and career goals. I am a requested speaker on digital technology and brand development issues. I want to work with you to increase the value of your current opportunities while attracting new ones. Every one of you is unique and we all share challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. As a super connector, I work with you as an executive coach to guide you along the complicated business and career development road, providing the enhancement tools and information you need to succeed. Together, I will help you succeed in today's challenging business climate. I will evaluate and measure your progress. Best of all, I am right alongside you every step of the way. Build the brand called you. Genius.